Hi everyone. Um, hopefully um, I'll be quick. It's hard to explain as well, you know, only 15 minutes, but I'll try to do my best. And I promise not to be too technical. I on purpose made the presentation as simple as I could so everyone could understand. I'm going to start talking about me a little bit. I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's pretty south. If you like football, that's where Messi is from. Um, I moved to Glasgow two years ago, and since then, I've been working as an Agile coach at Skyscanner. I've been working with Agile and Scrum uh, almost 10 years now. I'm a certified Scrum Master, and I'm a certified professional in Agile coaching and uh, Agile facilitation. So the first thing we need to understand about Agile is that Agile is a culture. Uh, and this is not a methodology or a process, it's a culture. And as a culture, it has its principles and it has um, its values. So um, you can benefit from implementing some of the concepts of Agile, but unless you have that switch in your mindset and you stop doing Agile to really become and be Agile, you're not going to have the full benefits. So in the latest 90s, um, this group of guys, they were all doing different methodologies, such as the SDM, Scrum, um, feature-driven development, extreme programming. So in 2001, they decided to get together, the 17 of them, all these methodologies had more or less the same philosophy. So that's when Agile was born. They decided to create the Agile Manifesto. The Agile Manifesto consists in 12 principles, which I'm not going to go over them today, so don't worry. Uh, but I encourage you to go to agilemanifesto.org and read them if you're interested. Hopefully after my talk you will. Um, but I'm going to talk about uh, these four values that more or less summarize those 12 principles that I was telling you about. The first value talks about individual class interactions over processes and tools. And this doesn't mean that we don't care about processes and tools, but we want to have teams that work together, teams that, if possible, they are co-located, they interact, they interact on a daily basis, and they are all aligned and know what's the common goal. The second one is working software over competence in documentation and against a lot of people says that Agile is against documentation. That's not true. But we feel that you need to do the amount of documentation that's only necessary. If you tell your client if they rather read a hundred page document that will tell them how the software is going to look like and it's going to work against being able to see a demo or a prototype, they're probably going to choose the demo and the prototype. So that's what working software is all about. Third one is customer collaboration over contract negotiation. In Agile, we have contracts. It's not that we don't have them. But at the same time, we want the customer or client working close to us. We want to hear their feedback. We want them to see our progress and to tell us if we're doing well, if we're going in the right direction, or if it's not what they wanted. And the last but not least is responding to change over following a plan. And as you've all said before, uh, we are in a fast moving world. Everything changes. And I promise you, if you stick to a long term plan, let's say a year and a two, or two years for a project, probably your competitor will have it earlier and you're going to be losing money. So again, it's not that we don't care um, about the things that are in white, but we care about the things that are in green the most. So how does, does it really work? How does Azure really work? And I'm going to try to explain this with a simple example. Um, let's say a friend of yours comes to you and tells you that they want you to organize their party, birthday party. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get together with them and they are going to tell you everything they want for the party. And you're going to create a to-do list or a task list. The second thing you need to do is ask them what's a must-have and what are the things that if you don't have time, you can kind of skip. 
And you're going to organize, organize at least by priority from the one that has the highest priority to the one that has the least. Your third step is going to be trying to estimate how long those tasks are going to take you. These could be hours, minutes, days, wherever. You're going to try to estimate all of them. Fourth step, start doing things. Things are not going to be done by themselves, so start working. And while you're working, you're going to discover that things you're estimating might be different. Things might take you less or more time. Or your friend might come at the middle of the week and tell you he forgot to invite 10 more people, or he doesn't really want recording music, he wants a live band. So you'll need to adapt that plan to the daily changes or the requirement changes. And Ashel can be done with all these methodologies that I mentioned earlier. So what's really the big trick about Ashel? So far so good, nothing different. And for that, I'm going to try to explain it comparing to the old way of doing things. And the old way of doing things was waterfall. And waterfall was pretty much, much sequential. You will meet with your customer at the very beginning and you will get all the requirements there. That would take long hours. And then you wouldn't see your customer anymore at the very end of the project where you will hand over your product or service. What was the problem there? Um, probably you didn't get the requirements right. So you had a high risk of delivering something that they didn't really want it in the first place. So you were losing money, were losing time. What Ashall does is Ashall is an iterative process. So we're going to repeat these iterations um, all the time. And as you can see here, we're going to increment the value in every iteration. And so you see it more clearly, I'm going to explain it with this example. In the traditional way of working, if you wanted, if your customer wanted a car, you will start from the very beginning. So first iteration, not a lot of value for the customer, he couldn't be that happy, right? In, instead, with Ashel, okay, it's a longboard, it's not a car, but at least he can use it to go from one way to the other. And that's what we mean by giving value in every iteration. We will build something simple, the minimum buyout product that we call, and we're going to increment its value until we reach to what the client wanted. And instead of the old way of doing things that we won't see the customer at the very end, until the very end, sorry, in a show, we're going to see the customer in each, after each iteration. We're going to show them what we've done and we're going to adapt the plan according to what they want or they need. So, what's in it for the customer? Oh, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> what's in it for the customer? They have an earlier return of investment. Uh, they, have, they are able to see the progress and they are able to change and adapt the plan if things change. What's in it for the team? They have early visibility of what's going on and if they need to change something. And teams in Ashall, uh, we want them to be, if possible, small enough, but at the same time, self-organized and autonomous. We want the team to make decisions. And this is kind of a summary, and if you take anything home from my talk today, I want it to be this slide. Always remember that Agile is a culture and you need to embrace it as that. Collaboration is key in Agile. You will collaborate with your teammates. You will collaborate with your client. It's not possible unless you have everyone's collaboration. There's a lot of team empowerment. Continuous flow of value is what I was saying that we want to be delivering value all the time. There's a lot of flexibility and adaptability together with openness and transparency. Because in Ashall, we want to inspect and adapt. And what we're going to do is, if we realize something is not working well, we're going to take care of the problem and we're going to improve. We're going to try to improve the product as well as our internal processes and the way we're doing things. If you want more information here, you have a couple of links where you can go, the first one. It's uh, the Ashel Manifesto, and here you have an explanation.
explanation of different methodologies such as extreme programming, Scrum, Kanban. Um, so, okay, if you want to get in touch with me, I can answer any questions by email or link. Please do so. And I think that's all. Thank you very much.